Specialty coffee? Yeah, I bet. Andy's mom bought us these mugs when I moved into my school apartment. And I think the graphic design work is just so incredible and unique. I will be snacking on this vegan, raw, gluten-free, sugar-free, egg-free, dairy-free donut. And if you want the full review, that is in um, two videos from now, technically, because this will be a part one and a part two. Andy is snacking on delicacies from the local convenience store. How does it smell? Like, it smells so good. It I, does smell so good, I, wow. Okay, I expected like just this You just one. ruined my arrangement. Hmm? Oh, it's fine. And I wanna try this later too. Okay. This is like just $4, I don't know. $4? But you know Laos all is really famous for coffee. Oh yeah, which is something I didn't know. Laos is famous their, for coffee. Their quality is really nice. Yeah, this is the best smelling coffee I think I've ever smelled. Which is ironic, because if you watched our last video, I revealed Andy got this coffee, Weasel Coffee, while in Laos on his business trip, excursion, retreat, business retreat. This coffee, Weasel Coffee, is made from weasel poop. Basically, weasels eat coffee beans, um, digest some of it, the caffeine gets and taken they out. Absorb, like toxic and kind of. Okay, they digest the. Uh... Caffeine, yeah, like weasel digest caffeine, and then yeah. we only get like coffee, which is decaf. Yeah, so I think so. They re poop out the coffee beans, but now they're magically decaffeinated coffee beans. Yeah, yeah, we call them like uh, how, is, how do I pronounce it? Luwak, Luwak, yeah, yeah, Luwak. Let's try it. I, I'm so excited to try it. Yeah, it smells so good. It smells so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's start. Hello, everyone, Hi. and welcome back. This is the anticipated lu luwak, luwak weasel poop coffee taste test and assumptions video. You guys, um, well I asked on Instagram and YouTube, you guys answered on Instagram and YouTube assumptions you have about us, um, just me and both of us as a couple. But first we are going to test this uh, famous weasel poop coffee. To begin, the coffee beans are what everyone wants coffee beans to smell like. This is what you want a cafe to smell like. This is what you wish coffee breath smelled like. None of these things are sponsored. I'm not getting paid to say any of this. That is the best smelling coffee I've ever smelled in my life. How is it? Well, you already had it before. So good. So good? Yeah, I'm gonna try mine. It's nice and dark. Usually, I can't handle just straight black coffee. I used to only add sugar, and then I switched to only adding milk, but here goes. It's strong, yet unassaulting. It's not mild, smooth, I guess that would be a word. Strong, but smooth. I think that taste is delicious. I could drink this black. It's nutty, the smell at least is like chocolatey, like those coffee grounds smell like chocolate, a little bit. They smell sweet. This has like a natural sweetness to it. That's like the best coffee I've ever had. But we're gonna add almond milk now. And I think the tastes are gonna complement each other really well. Andy and I have our snacks. I have my everything free donut that I mentioned before. If you wanna see me do a proper taste test, that's in two videos from now. Because this video, Assumptions, is going to be in two parts. Can you put this back in the fridge while you're up, actually? Okay. This is the best coffee I've ever had. Cheers. That's good. Mm. Those flavors go so well together. All right, should we start diving into some assumptions? First assumption, you guys are the cutest couple. Aw, thanks. Next assumption, you are homesick and want to go back to the States. The answer is yes. But apart from the obvious, like family, I miss American architecture. Like different periods of house design, like colonial style, cape houses, farmhouse style houses. Like, and maybe it's because I'm living in Seoul, which is a city. You didn't tell me that before. Oh, I miss house, I miss houses so much from America. Like just driving around and looking at different houses. Mm. I mean, living in Seoul in any city, really, it's mostly just apartment buildings. Yeah, it's always lovely. And yeah, they're not very varied. I miss different architecture from different styles, from different influences, like a good Victorian house. Amazing, my favorite. All right, next assumption is Andy loves you more than you know. I think I know how much you love me. But you can't guess. You can't measure. It's bigger than the universe. <laughs> okay. You can't imagine how much we guess. Okay. 
So, how dare. How dare, how dare I think I know how much you love me. <laughs> so I guess that's true. That is a true assumption. Mm -hmm. Next. I don't know, but I feel sometimes Andy's facial expressions feels like he wants to say, you talk too much. Can Correct. And lately, I translate and I make the <laughs> subtitle. Yeah. I realize why I'm making the subtitle. And she speaks a lot and she's used like similar sentence a lot, but using different words. But it makes me like so how do I say? Um, frustrated. Frustrated and like stressed a little bit. Mm. But because I'm so worried about misunderstandings. So I will yeah, rephrase she, the same thing like six times. She explained same sentence using <laughs> like three words, three different verbs or I don't know. Yeah. So. And I'm aware I do that. Next, I assume you and Andy don't argue. This assumption, 100% false. We don't fight. Yeah. That's the thing. We've never had a serious fight. But we argue a lot. Constantly. We argue just for a bit and then we just do and we something not happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget immediately. Like, um, or like just oh hi and then like oh I love you. Okay. Yeah, We're like sometimes looking. in the middle of arguing, one of us will just be like, Hi. And then like <laughs> it's over. <laughs> and then yeah. We don't care each other. <laughs> yeah. So we've never had a fight, but we do argue a, fight. a lot. Next. You seem like the cute one, but in reality, Andy is a giant baby. I don't like the use of the word baby, but Andy definitely acts way different off camera than on camera. I don't want to expose you or anything, but you are so freaking cuddly. You're so cute. Because I usually need love all the time. <laughs> I like. I I feel like craving. Craving. Love. Even though he love, she loves me a lot, mm -hmm. and she expresses her feeling and I understand how much she loves me but even though I understand about her love but generally like genetically I like <laughs> needs I, I like, feel like beggar but you're not clingy hmm? you're not clingy I don't know but like we'll like... just be like sitting together like watching we've been watching the office lately which is the most I've ever seen Andy laugh at some of the shit Steve Carell says but we'll just be sitting nicely and then you'll be like mm, and like throw your leg over me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I love that. Oh, but my brain works like that. I generally you just need that contact. Think, yeah. Mm. So I wouldn't say Andy's a giant baby, mm. but we're both equally cute off camera, I would say. Yeah. Cute. Cute. Assumption, you plan on staying in Korea for a really long time. People have different ideas of what a really long time is. Like in mm. my brain, a really long time equals 10 years. We definitely won't be here that long. Different standard. I, for me, like five years is long. It's or, long? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We won't be here more than five years. Mm. That's for sure. We'll probably leave before the five year point. And that's because we want to like fully road trip the United States before settling for life. Like we want to travel more. I also want to go to Europe and other places in South Asia, but that's all dependent on money. So we won't be in Korea for a super long time just because we want to get out and see other places before we settle for real, yeah? No assumptions. You guys seem to have a healthy, genuine, kind, and peaceful love. Aw, Thank thanks. You. That's true. What a good assumption. Oh, she said no assumption. But oh. What a good thought. <laughs> I assume Andy isn't into filming YouTube videos, but does them because he loves you. Respond. Yeah, I think it's kind of true. You know, at the beginning of our relationship, being in the camera, being like showing off mm -hmm. the camera was really uncomfortable to me. Mm -hmm. But now I'm being, I'm getting used to with camera. Mm -hmm. So. You have I feel like, yeah, only 5 to 10% I force myself to be in camera. But I will say, I have always communicated that depending on his mood or how he was feeling or just whatever, he doesn't need to be in any YouTube video. If I have an idea and he doesn't want to participate, he can say no and I'm going to respect that and understand that and be totally okay with it. 
So there are some videos he has sat out just because he felt like it, and that's perfectly okay. Next assumption, Rachel is very, very smart. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> and she is really creative. I know how people performed in high school was extremely arbitrary and relative. I was in, so for those of you that aren't American, a lot of American schools are like below average classes, average honors, and then AP. AP is considered a college level course. So in high school, I was in AP or college level English and history because I loved English and history and I was really good at them. But I was in below average math and science because mm. I just literally could not fathom and understand numbers in any sense. Chemistry destroyed me, but I also destroyed those exams on crime and punishment in AP English. Back when SATs were out of 2400, 2400, I got 1870 and my state average was 1500. So I was a good, I was a really good student and test taker. So I would say like, I'm smart at some things, but I can't do division to save my life. <laughs> My brain is very selective in what I'm good at. Rachel loves Korean food. I would say yes. When I first started abroad, I actually couldn't do spicy food at all. Like my first time trying kimchi, I was like, oh, like I can swallow it, but it's not that great. I love kimchi now. I love kimchi. Especially white kimchi. Especially white kimchi, but that's not spicy. But I could eat my body weight in white kimchi easily. <laughs> Um, I haven't tried a lot of Korean food. I would say I've tried probably 2% of Korean food. I mean, it's so bold of me to assume I've tried any more than that. Mm. I, I probably haven't even tried 2%. Like the whole country and all of the cuisines from all the different regions. Mm. But I do in general like Korean style food. Yeah, she likes Korean style food. Especially Korean food is based on like vegetables. So yeah, I think she likes Korean food a lot. Not like you like more than American food, but almost equally you liked Korean food. Equally? Not equally. I wouldn't say, I don't like American food. Because I, I feel like American food in of itself, mm -hmm. this is a whole other tangent, I can talk about this later. What I believe mm -hmm. American food to be. That can be a whole other video if you guys want to talk about okay. that. Okay. Alright, moving on. I feel you care more or express your love better than him. I know you love each other equally though. Hmm. I think we express love equally. And yep. we love each other equally. Yes. Hmm? Next assumption. Someone had to say this. You are only with him because he's Korean. Assumption. Andy looks like a professional chill cucumber, but is actually the goofiest of goofs. I agree with that, but not the goofiest. Goofy. You're not the goofiest. But if I'm with my friends, yeah, or I'm, everyone's different with their friends. Super, super comfortable. Mm. Andy is pretty um, calm and reserved in public. I'm the one that's like bopping around between mm. things. But he does have his unexpected moments, like when we were grocery shopping, and he just like silently, like sped up and then jumped on the cart and like rode it down the aisle which I shared on my Instagram story. You have moments like that, maybe once a week, where just in an unexpected moment, you do something silly. Mm -hmm. And I love those moments. They're like my favorite moments. Assumption, you guys must love each other a lot for your relationship to survive the distance. Mm, yes. If you guys are new, Andy and I were long distance for two solid years. Um, I studied abroad in Korea, met him. After two months of dating in person, I left to go home to America. We saw each other four times in a two year span, like every six months basically we would see each other for a week at a time. Um, and yeah, your love has to be strong to survive distance like that. It has to be. It makes us stronger by ourselves. It did make us stronger. Feeling with long distance love make like strong love. Yeah, anyone that survives long distance you're strong, we see you, we support you. Anyone in a long distance relationship right now, best of luck, it can work out. I assume you guys will get engaged this year. I don't wanna know. You keep that to yourself, don't tell me anything. We're gonna move on, because I don't want any information on this. <laughs> I thought Andy was Eugene from BuzzFeed. It depends on the angle depends and on the, the image. Angle. 
Yeah, Eugene, as we all know, has many different looks. Sometimes I feel like you guys I look, look like him. You Ultimately, like you have totally different, different nose shapes, yeah. totally different eyebrow structure, totally different jaw lines. But from some angles and some scenarios, in some like point of in view, in some lights, yeah, in some moment, I feel like oh, Andy. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Eugene? Oh no, it's just Andy. <laughs> Alright, last one from Instagram. Assumption, you guys have a hard time adjusting to each other's cultural differences. I don't think we had like hard time to deal with because I am like basically I am very traditional but conservative person, but I really open-minded and mm. I like experienced Western mind in Canada. Yeah. So I understood. Because you went to school in Canada for a yeah, bit. Yeah, I am. We have little things that we'll notice about each other and we'll bring it up. But I don't think we've ever had a huge cultural difference. You know, sometimes I feel cultural differences, but I just ignore or I just think, oh, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I just deal with it. And then I forget. Yeah. So I have no idea what kind of. Big culture differences. Yeah. We don't have any huge ones, so there's nothing that we have to actively small, be adjusting to. It's just small stuff. There's small things that don't require adjustment. You just acknowledge them and then move on. Yeah. Like we coexist mm -hmm. very easily. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so those are the end of the questions we will be answering from Instagram. Part two will be questions we were answering from YouTube, and they are a little more serious. They get into more like culture and our futures and things like that. So we are going to film it now, but you guys will see it in a couple days, not in this video segment. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for following me on Instagram and sending me assumptions via Instagram. If you like me and you like Andy and you want to support me, you can um, join my Patreon. For just $1 a month, you guys can help me go full time and help me realize my absolute dream. I'm not forcing you or pressuring you, or I hope you don't feel like I'm pressuring you. I'm just bringing it up. My Patreon does exist. If you want me to go full time, you want to help me, consider joining. And I will see you guys next time at this same table. Bye bye!